Hey, girl. Super booth. It is. Tip top audio. Yeah, we're Feels here. like we must talk to you because you're always on the modular events <laughs> and a Thank regular you. fixture uh, with uh, some new stuff for the show, right? Yeah, yeah. We actually um, been releasing a lot of stuff lately. Uh, <laughs> Some of you know that uh, we just finished building our own, basically, I should call it a little factory where we make our own stuff and I've been busy handling that. And finally this is going and I have the time to be back on the design. And we start uh, putting out the ideas we've been holding for quite a while. And um, we started this year with our quantizer, uh, which is this little guy here. Yep. You actually saw it, uh, the prototype, uh, in Mesa two years ago, and I demoed it to you, and it was, uh, it was pretty raw back then, uh, but got pretty completed by now. And it's full of features, as you can see, there's just so many switches and jacks and the slider in here, and this thing is both very high precision, but at the same time, extremely playable. We wanted a quantizer that is more than just the quantization function. We want it to be, again, part of the instrument, part of the intuitivity that Modular gives uh, with its ability to touch buttons and move things. And uh, so obviously we got some jacks here that do the natural uh, note conversions, scale conversions, uh, one view octave out. Then we got the clock in and a reset in. And these basically allows you to record um, things you do on the quantizer. I mean, there's just a ton of functionality here. I won't go deep into, into how, it. How many steps can you record in the quantizer? Uh, you can basically record the same timeline as the circadian rhythm, because one of the thing about those two is that they can communicate together using a bus we developed called the sync bus. Um, and you can have them synchronized together where the quantizer follow the timeline of the circadian. So you can, let's say, uh, set a preset on the circadian rhythm, um, go to the quantizer, patch something or just move things manually and it will record that at that uh, uh, loop that you set on the circadian rhythm. Oh, okay. um, yeah, so you can either do it that way. Another interesting way to do it is just more, I should say, uh, how should I say, um, not so precise but, not, uh, but still fun is that you can use a clock in and the reset in and just use an oscillator to clock it and go through the steps uh, by itself. There's a record button. Uh, once you hit record, it will record what you do. Once you release the record, it's going to start repeat what you do. Every time you're going to reset it, it's going to reset it to uh, step number one. So it's pretty deep. It got a lot of things. And again, probably the most important thing about it is it's very fast and very precise. So um, if you worry about tuning, if you're a guy who's trying to make music with a modular, um, and I'm saying tonal music, then uh, this is uh, this is the thing that. And also, I guess if you've got a, a non a non quantized CV sequencer, you can very quickly exactly. dial something in the right key and all. Exactly. That kind of stuff. I mean, uh, we've been using the Z1000 for a long time, but it's not quantized. And if you want to have something that falls on the scales, uh, it's just uh, you really need to dial it, and it's kind of hard. If you've got a good earring, you can do it. But um, when you are working with a module, there's so many sounds coming out; it's confusing. And if you like, and if you like performing, you want the minimum amount of time where it's out exactly, of tune, right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's been, you know, it's been talked here about a lot in Superbooth. I've been talking to people. We've been working with a lot of uh, working musicians. That means that our gear needs to work immediately. There's no time for it to fiddle around and figure out things. So pretty much everything we do is very straightforward. That's why we try to make our panels as simple as possible, as yeah, clean as possible. Yeah, but also, I mean, the thing is, is I've noticed here, you know, you're, you, the way that you design your panels, you leave a lot of it open, and so that it's able to be used without being obscured by cables. So, exactly. Because you know, that's one of the that's one of the dilemmas of uh, modular design and usage, isn't it? It's exactly. Like, I can patch it, but once I patched it, I can't see anything. Right. You cannot see anything, and um, imagine you're in a dark stage. You cannot view anything, not just by the panels. But you know this whole thing is getting—it's just too much. And um, someone who has never tried it, being on stage with a modular, might say, "Ah, it's not a big deal. I can probably go away with this." But once you stand on the stage and you got a crowd in front of you and you feel the pressure to deliver, you understand the gear need to be there to support you. When your mind goes blank, you need those visual cues. Exactly, right? exactly. And that's that's I think what we do. This this has been our aesthetic for a long time, and it's just been enhanced more and more. We. Uh, start transitioning to this new style. Um, yeah, with the colored, uh, it looks like banana plugs, but it's actually yeah, orange, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so we kind of move from gray scale to happy scale, and uh, <laughs> major to yeah. minor, minor to major. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we're getting great feedback about this. People love this, and um, we, this is this has been something that uh, is going to continue evaluating. All our new modules going to take this new shape. 
Um, we do uh, modify some of the old thing as well into this new design, but this is a process that takes time, so there's nothing right now that's going to be changed anytime soon to anybody who's uh, thinking about it. Um, yeah, another thing I want to show you is uh, One. One is a sample player. Now, it's a very low cost, small, super efficient sample player, but the very unique thing about it is that it needs to coexist with its fellow analog modules around it. And what I mean by that is that when we trigger a sound, an analog sound, it reacts in the speed of between nano to microsecond. It's very, very fast, very, very immediate. And digital modules need to process information before they can operate. And that takes time. And that's what's called the latency. We are all familiar with digital. And latency is a problem in the modular because once you put an analog module next to a digital module and the digital have latency, you always get the digital coming after. And that creates problems in the beat and other problems obviously from mismatching of signals. Um, one was developed specifically to minimize this effect. We went down all the way to 0 0.25 of a millisecond. I don't think there's any sampler in the world. And that's, is that trigger or... Uh, that's trigger that, to sound out. Right. And yeah. just, will it work chromatically as well or is it just... Exactly. So this is basically the latency. Like if you compare it to anything that else that have latency, we're talking about like usual samples have between 6 to 10 milliseconds and you know that about 2 milliseconds, 3 milliseconds you start hearing the, the drift. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So um, below 1 millisecond, it's actually a quarter of a millisecond, this is very, very immediate. Um, so this is a, a, just a single voice but you could load different samples exactly. for the SD, micro SD. Exactly, it's, it's a single voice and uh, another thing interesting about it is that, um, you know, most digital circuits work with a, an audio converter that converts the digital into an analog signal and it does it with a sample rate, a fixed sample rate, um, which is very efficient for the programmer who designed uh, the module. But for you as a user, you get something which is kind of like a, a sound in a can. You're not fully aware of it, but that's what's going under the hood. What we try to do here is kind of break the, uh, away from that. And what we did is we actually controlled the audio converter sample rate, and that's how we create pitch changes. So it, in a way, acts a little bit more like a tape, if you think about it. Right, Everything is okay. much more dynamic and more flexible. Um, and that has a sonic effect, a really beautiful sonic effect. And when you listen to uh, the sound coming out of one, if you actually have one, you immediately get stunned by how beautiful and clear, yet not super crystal, not super uh, polished. It's just like, it sounds really nice and raw. Have similar to similar in a way in a, that it can again live together with the analog uh, so modules next right. to it. Have you got any voices uh, running off this that we can? Uh, hear? Let's see. Right here. Okay, so we hear it right now, and you can hear basically one that's playing there. that that ba, 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 ba. That's it. Okay, and next to it are drum modules from the 909 and the 808, and you can see in the and the 909 kick is playing here and you can hear how well it sits in the beat okay now and this is that's the pitch these are the sounds it just loads up straight off the yeah, exactly okay now these sounds can be you know anything from um you know, from sounds you recorded in the modular and you drop into the card, or sounds from the outside world. Uh, but one thing we created here is that, you know, we've been working with a lot of musicians worldwide. Some of them are the best sound designers in the world. And we said, hey, maybe you guys can bring some of your knowledge and your ideas in what is missing inside the modular uh, as a sound source. Obviously, we have oscillator, filters, you know, a lot of things, but maybe we can bring a new palette of sound from the outside world uh, into here. And we've been teaming with the Glitch Machine. He's a guy uh, located in the United States, and he's been doing cards for us uh, with sounds. And a lot of people who get one basically get the cards with it. And ah, so you're buying a sound library as well, you'll get Exactly. Now, some people might say, oh, these are like preset, these are like, well, it's not exactly true because it's a sound source inside a modular. Yeah, sure. So, um, and those sounds are very unique. These are not just sounds we, you know, collect from libraries of soft synths. That's not the idea. We want something that the modular doesn't have. So we have uh, all kind of acoustic sounds. We have all kind of uh, acoustic yet um, 
edited sounds, band circuits. There's just tremendous amount of things. So, um, can you modulate the sample choice? So, can you switch samples per beat? You know, so you can have. A, yes. You know, so you can. You can do that. So one, uh, you see, that's another thing. When you develop something, everybody wants it to do a million of things. They want it to be as small as possible and cheap as possible, right? right. So you need to make everybody happy. So if you see those little drawings over here, you see that uh, there's modes to that knob. Yeah. This knob can be either quantized, okay, and this is basically this little keyboard you see here. Yeah. That means that when CV comes in, whatever is playing in here is gonna be quantized to a musical note. You don't need a center quantizer for it. Um, those little dots represent the dots on the Technics uh, turntable, and we were represented for pitch, basically free pitch. So if you want something more glitchy, you would use this, let's say you apply an envelope to the pitch of the, of the device. Then you got those little things here, and these are basically the file. It's the file switching. So if you connect the CV, yep. You can file switch. Exactly. And how fast is it? Now that, that has a price to pay, obviously, because it takes time to read the data from the card. Um, it's not as fast as the regular mode, but it's still relatively fast enough to play nicely with the other drums. So, so it, I think we did a good job on that, on that part. Um, there's some issues, obviously, because there's like sequencers from other manufacturer, and they might not have the gate and the CV coming at the same time. So we might get some reports from users say, hey, you know, I got this sequencer and the file switching is not very repetitive. Um, obviously, we won't take this and make it less, uh, less good because there's... Somebody else isn't, isn't so good. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but at least we know that in our ecosystem, it works real well. And with most uh, sequencers out there, it works pretty well. Because well, a lot of people use like a kind of a tip-top rhythm section, don't they? I mean, exactly. that's kind of where, you know, you see a lot of people with circadian rhythm and your, uh, your, your your drum modules, and that's kind of where they start, and then they have exactly. other stuff for melodics, right? Yes, I mean, we've been known for, for the rhythm. That's have been probably our biggest thing as part of, you know, we all make noises with the modular, we enjoy doing that, but the rhythm is a big part of what we do, and, um, and we don't want to compromise it, no matter what, so. So is, the, is one available now? Yeah, one is available. One, it's uh, I think it's 135 in the US. Okay. So yeah. That's, that's so right. yeah. No, it's it's 150 maybe. I'm 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 confusing it with the next module I'm going to talk to you about. Ah, okay. okay. Yeah. The next module, which is 135, is our full processor, and that's uh, the little guy here. Yes. Oh, okay. Wave, wave folding. I'm wave guessing? folding. Yeah, or wave multiplier, however you want to call it. Um, this is a very simple uh, circuit uh, based on diodes to clip a signal um, and fold it around. Um, it's not really folding, I would say, mathematically, but it folds sonically or visually on a scope. And it sounds tremendously well. It has a beautiful effect. It was originally designed in the 70s. You can find them on the surge system, the Buchla systems. Um, and the idea was to enhance the, the sound, the waves coming from uh, standard analog oscillators. Obviously, we have the square wave, triangle, so sine. Now, how do you get more, more? Because we always yeah, want more, yeah, right? Sure. So, um, so this will modify an incoming wave. Exactly. And, uh, yeah, okay. So if we let's try to see if we can hear this one. Um, so I got right now the sine wave going from the Z3000 into the input, and I got the out from the wave folder coming out. Very nice and classic effect. Smooth, I mean, it's yes. like a cross between FM and filter, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. You know, somebody who's not very familiar with modular might think it is a filter, because this has this effect of adding harmonics as, as higher as you go. And also, kind of low-pass gate-ish as well, because you're getting that brightness. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So a very, very classic, you know, what people like to call West Coast style uh, synthesis. I'm not a big fan of those terms, but we'll use it anyhow. <laughs> so. Um, so what we're hearing now is just the basic uh, fold processor, okay? And obviously having a different waveform creates a different sound. Okay. That's a sawtooth, right? Yep. And the bias input changes the, the fold behavior. You can apply only to the edges. 
lovely. Yeah. So I, you've got a bit of effects on that. Yeah, well, I got a little bit of uh, delay go, here. Should always, I should say that. Sometimes <laughs> people go, wow. Yeah. And that's true. a dry signal. So absolutely, yeah. absolutely. But I, I, you know, I'm here at the show and I want to enjoy the show. So absolutely. I put myself delay. Yeah. Yeah. No, of course. Yeah. Like, me too. Every time. <laughs> Like more, they're being very pedestrian yes, with the effects. Yes, exactly. So, um, and those two knobs are basically CV controllable. Yeah. So we call this the inject and this is uh, the fold CV. But what I created is, um, let's go back to the sine wave. So this was the regular fold, okay? All right. What we created is another section and we call it the subdivider, okay? And I'm gonna take the alpha from you. Now what the subdivider does, I'm gonna higher the pitch a little bit, it takes the fold and it divides it into four outputs, one octave apart, square waves. Okay, so let's hear it. So this is octave one, octave two, divided by four, divided by eight. Okay. Lower the delay a little bit. Okay. Now when you start folding, this changes how this reacts. Interesting. It's almost wave table isn't it? It fun. is. It's, it's kind of weird and aggressive. So what happened here is that a subdivider works by getting the wave, see the zero crossing, and basically follow that to create pulses. Now, when you do wave folding, the wave is start getting really weird, ups and downs. So the subdivider is getting in and out. He's, he's, he's losing the center point. So some of the octaves here turn on and off when you do the wave folding. So they're retracking and kind of figure out. Exactly, trying to figure out. And it's an analog circuit, so it happens really fast and it happened really smooth and organic. So it's, it's a very aggressive effect, but I think, I think it's pretty unique for, for, for what it is. And then of course you can always filter it post that as well. Because exactly, if you filter it out, then you make it, you, it's more controllable. You have, uh, you have more, more to work with. So um, yeah, so this has just been released and uh, we're getting great feedback for it. Um, it's a purely analog circuit and we said it earlier, it's, it's Pretty cheap, I think. It's 135 US dollar in the US, um, and yeah, I'm really happy with this one. And we got a lot of new things coming, as I said earlier. You know, I got more time now on my hands to go back to the design stage. And when you go here and you see what's going on in our industry, it's absolutely fascinating. And I feel proud to be one of the ones who brought it to where it is right now. And I think we have a bright future coming because there's just a lot of things to do to take this thing even further. Um, I think it's already magnificent, but there's just plenty of things. And uh, the next thing we're going to see from Tip Top is going to be the SD909. This is going to come in about two months. It's an exact one-to-one -one reproduction of the 909 snare drum. Uh, took about two years to get it sound right. It's not as simple as people think. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, you know, you're dealing with technology like from 20, 30 and years ago. To, and you have to unpick it and also find the one that sounds closest to what they meant when they built it. Exactly, well. exactly. And, and who knows, you know, you cannot get like a brand new uh, TR-99 from the factory today to compare. So all you can do is really follow map, basically follow those schematics and try to understand what they were trying to do. Um, get few TR-99, compare them and obviously find kind of... So you're the right guy, thing. you're the guy who's putting the price up because you're buying them all for research, <laughs> right? Yes. <laughs> if you wonder where they go from eBay, then that's, that's probably me. Thank you very much, Kerr. I appreciate the time. Thank Cheers. you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.